The Supreme Court did something not awful for the first time in a while. Uh, they upheld a federal law that allows domestic abusers, um, prevents domestic abusers from getting guns. Just basic stuff, stuff that's been on the books since 1968. That's right, so thank God. And by a swift majority, eight to one in fact, and we'll discuss who the dissenting opinion was, but Chief Justice John Roberts wrote for that majority and said the court had quote, no trouble coalescing around the idea that an individual who possesses a, poses a threat can be denied access to weapons. Quote, our tradition of firearm regulation allows government to disarm individuals who present a credible threat to the physical safety of others. Thank you, justices, we think, although there's more because there's other shoes that are dropping on this. In fact, a lot of shoes. Um, but what about that? What about keeping guns out of the hands of domestic abusers or those who have restraining orders against them? Well, that goes back to 1968, a gun control act, graphic four, and subsequent amendments that prohibit anyone convicted of a felony and anyone subject to domestic violence protective order from possessing a firearm. The intended effect of this new legislation is to extend the firearms ban to anyone convicted of a misdemeanor crime of domestic violence and save people's lives, mostly women's lives, but entire families as well. And there's a lot of data to support that when domestic abusers have firearms, they are used to mass kill people, not only their family members, but others. So according to the Johns Hopkins Center for Gun Violence Solutions, nearly half of women murdered in the United States are killed by a current or former intimate partner. More than half of these intimate partner homicides are by firearm. Women are five times more likely to be murdered by an abusive partner when the abuser has access to a gun. And then more broadly, right? Mass killings, we know in this country, those are measured by four people or more killed, right? And those usually actually are happening inside the home. So mass killings committed by a family member far outnumber the public mass killings, according to a data set com compiled by USA Today, Associated Press and Northwestern. Such incidents are seven times more likely to take place in a home or other shelter. And, and one has occurred on average every three and a half weeks for the past two decades. So again, four or more people killed. Now I know you're wondering, well, if people who are domestic abusers don't have access to firearms right now, what's going on? Well, sadly, a lot of domestic abuse for good reason, um, some obviously f because of fear doesn't get reported. A lot of people don't have restraining orders on the people in their lives who are threatening them every single day. Ergo, they are at, able to access firearms. So thankfully, the court decided that no, that should stay in place. It's doing a good enough job as is. Um, there's one dissenter. Guys, and I want you to figure, just take a wild guess who you think it might be. Um, okay, that's enough time. It was this guy. It was this guy. Of uh, course. Of course, <laughs> which is weird because he's also in sort of a domestic relationship that's quite famous. So I'm like, why does he want access to a gun? What's going on? Um, no, but so that is Justice Clarence Thomas, of course, who wrote uh, the court and government do not point to a single historical law revoking a citizen's amendment, a citizen's second amendment right based on the possible interpersonal violence. Yet in the interest of ensuring the government can regulate one subset of society, heaven forbid we regulate the abusers, today's decision puts at risk the second amendment rights of many more. Now the reason I wanted to wait on that is because there's actually, he's speaking to the 2022 Supreme Court decision in the New York Rifle Association versus Bruin that actually overruled a New York State law that had limits on concealed carry, right? And that 2022 law threw a bunch of state gun laws into disarray. And so now all these cases are coming before the court, like is this 1968 you know, a domestic abuser law a violation of the Second Amendment or not? And there are more that are coming down the pike. For example, can you be a drug offender? like Hunter Biden and still possess a weapon. Can you be you know, a felon and possess a weapon like Donald Trump cannot in the state of New York? So that's why this is all bubbling up now. So we've avoided this one case, but there are cases that are coming down the pike because of that 2022 decision. Thanks for watching, our audience has helped build TYT into the media giant it is today. Together we can accomplish anything. Support our work and join us at tyt.com slash team. I'm gonna explain how Hunter Biden is actually might be critical in this entire question of gun rights in America. 
uh, and in a way that, that the right wing might not expect at all. Uh, but uh, one of our members, Wang Jun, wrote in, uh, wait, SCOTUS did something right again? Are they sick? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, watch the show Monday through Friday at six o'clock Eastern. Be part of the show for the members. We read your comments. And I'm gonna address that. Uh, by the way, it's tyt.com slash team. And we'll have the link in the description box below to become a member and be part of the show. So um, this is not an anti-gun decision. This is an anti-crime case. That is why almost all the conservatives joined the liberal judges in saying, yes, we can still treat criminals this way. Because th th for them, they're thinking in terms of taking away rights of criminals, right? For the liberal judges, they're thinking, well, okay, we want to make sure that there's less gun violence and we want to protect against domestic violence, right? So that's why it's nearly a unanimous decision. The one dissenter is Clarence Thomas because he's mental. And so let me, so I'm going to back it up. Let me explain what the ruling, his original ruling that Francesco was referring to, and the insane. Uh, argument that was made in this case that he bought. So the original ruling was in order to uh, interpret uh, the Second Amendment and gun rights, you have to apply whatever the founding fathers would have thought in the 1700s. But the founding fathers didn't have computers or the internet or any of the things that we have or AR-15s or AK-47s or bump stocks or RPGs. They, like it doesn't make well, any sense. They definitely sense. didn't hit their wives. Yeah, well, actually, that's where it comes into play here, Franny, because the opposing counsel made the argument that that the founding fathers didn't mind domestic violence at all, <laughs> and that's actually <laughs> true. There were no laws laws like that. You could beat your wife, you could beat your slaves, you could beat your slaves who you were raping. I mean, look, all right. those things were totally free to do back then if you were a white male landowner, right? So they said, we're using Clarence Thomas's logic. So of course you could hit your wife and own a gun. Almost all of them did back then. And Clarence Thomas was like, yeah, that makes sense. Yep. And the other judges are like, no, just so like, no, 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 no. That doesn't make any sense. They're like, they had crimes back then, and your rights could be taken away for crimes. Even if we're using Clarence's logic in the previous case, we could still say, yes. These happen to be the crimes that are punished today. And hence, even by the 1700 logic, you could still say that if you're committed a crime of domestic violence, you're not allowed to own a gun. Yeah. That is clearly true, even with that absurd Clarence Thomas precedent from earlier. The only person who doesn't agree is Clarence Thomas, who's who thinks he wants to go back to the 1700s, but I'm not sure that he's thought it through. <laughs> Yeah, maybe maybe not uh, fully. And this is, I feel like the Second Amendment gun rights is the most principle for principle sake issue that America has. Mm -hmm. Because Clarence Thomas's dissent basically was, well, America's never done anything about gun violence before, so why start now? I mean, that that's yeah. essentially what I got from it. I yeah. don't have a law degree, but that's what it seemed like he said to me. And, you know, as time has progressed, I've really been thinking just about how it seems more and more like Americans can't really handle having firearms at all. Like it's easy to reflexively say that we have the rights to them and that's true. And you can't group everybody into, you know, the the lunatic category who's going to go and do some mass shootings, but I, just today three uh three people were killed and eight others wounded in I think Fortis, uh Arkansas. I'm pretty sure there was a mass shooting today and it just keeps happening and happening. Yeah. And usually it's committed by people who probably maybe didn't need to have weapons at all. So it just kind of reflects to me the sad state that we're in in a country to where we're rejoicing that the Supreme Court, well, maybe not rejoicing, but clapping our hands a little bit that the Supreme Court uh, maintained this rule. Yeah. And then, but they just did what they did with bump stocks and Roe and, and everything else. So it's, you know. Yeah, exactly. Which is it's so wild to be like there should be no law that doesn't have historical precedent uh, around guns. But there weren't bump stocks back then. There weren't AR-15s back then. So what are we talking about? I mean, at a certain point, you're totally right, Jackson. It's just it's just make believe. It's all on principle. It's all politics. I'm glad that Justice John Roberts and the other conservative, uh, you know, justices ruled this way, but who knows what's gonna happen in the future. And it is interesting that if they were to overturn or change laws around like whether um, drug, drug users and drug offenders can have firearms, 
they'd be undoing Hunter Biden's conviction, which is like maybe they maybe they're seeing the writing on the wall, and like okay, we can't do that because we just, uh, nah. but yeah, I mean, what's I also think it's wild that this was settled. This was settled law. States can make their own gun laws until two years ago, and now they're just creating extra work for themselves <laughs> to redo and rerule on a bunch of stuff that was already ruled on. I mean, wow, I love, you know, we just make really good use of our time in this country. Yeah, so let's go to Hunter Biden and how he plays into the Second Amendment here. Because to follow up on what Franny is saying, so if you can have your gun taken away for domestic violence, which is a crime, could you also have your gun taken away for you know, having a drug offense? And so in Hunter Biden's case, he did not disclose that he was doing drugs while he filled out that form to get the gun, right? And that's the crime that he was convicted of. So if the Supreme Court rules as they did today on the domestic violence issue in the Hunter Biden case, there's a good chance that that means, yeah, no, that's it. You, if you did drugs, you're not allowed to own a gun. Well, I guess we're gonna have to take away hundreds of millions of guns in the country. and. Yep. Uh, NRA and the gun owners and Republicans said they're all gonna lose their minds in mass confiscation. So now the reality is, of course, no one gets charged with that crime except Hunter Biden. There's only the, the difference between him and anyone else who's ever been charged with that crime is everyone else had an underlying crime. So they went to go rob a bank, yeah. plus they lied while they were getting uh, the gun about how they had done drugs, right? So then they'll get them on the underlying crime and this crime, right? right? But by itself, no one is ever charged with it. This was the most political prosecution I've probably ever seen. Well, also, nobody lies on those forms when you're trying to get a gun. No, gun. no. Nobody. By the way, Republicans, the right, the Second Amendment gun rights guys, you didn't lie about anything. You didn't get anything wrong in those forms. Maybe for some of you, you're like, oh no, I didn't. And I got everything. Maybe. Okay, good. And a lot of you are thinking, is that really the crime we charged Hunter Biden with? <laughs> yeah, it is. So you're in a situation where the Supreme Court is gonna have to either say, take away the guns of and lock up, I don't know, 100 million Americans. <laughs> and the Second Amendment doesn't mean anything anymore because you all did pot at some point. Right. Or of course Hunter Biden's prosecution was unconstitutional. So yeah. those are your choices. Well, and speaking of Hunter Biden too, and everything that was you know just laid out, I think it was uh, Thomas Massey and maybe a couple of other Republicans who dissented in the decision because they were pointing this out as well. Again, another example of principle for principle's sake. Sometimes they can be lined up on the right side because, as far as I know, Thomas Massey's a bit of a goofball. Um, but on this one, he was like, "Hold on, maybe not, maybe not, maybe we shouldn't, maybe we shouldn't do anything about guns whatsoever, even if it's Hunter Biden." So that's how you know they dedicated and they serious about it. <laughs> yeah, no, no, Jackson's right, and a bunch of them did it. Uh, Matt Gates also said the same thing. Even Lindsey Graham said it. What Matt Gates says was boring. Yeah, it was like I don't even <laughs> like this charge. Okay, but <laughs> it was only after he was convicted. <laughs> they were all like had their pitchforks and God make sure Hunter Biden goes to jail, and then they're like he's going to jail, and they're like oh okay yeah we didn't mean it. Uh, it's, don't ever charge anyone else with that. It was obviously political. We just wanted to punish him because we don't like him and his last name is Biden. But all, all of our constituents have broken that same law. So please. Matter of fact, don't talk about it too much because, like, you know, <laughs> gun ownership is kind of our thing. And now he's like a Democrat's son and it's weird and kind of makes him look like cool and good. No, yeah. no, tr focus on our felon. Our felon's really cool. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. Well, Supreme Court's going to rule on that too. And it's going to be decisive either way. Uh, so I have that to look forward to. You all have that to look forward to. And then uh, if they rule against uh, Hunter Biden, I'll be celebrating because that means there'll be a lot less guns in America. And if they rule for Hunter Biden, then we'll have the irony of the guys who wanted Hunter Biden in jail celebrating Hunter Biden's win in the Supreme Court. <laughs> America. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all of that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.